In November, we visited Oakland Cemetery, just east of downtown Atlanta. Today, we're going to go west along I-20 for a few miles to another of the city's historically significant burial grounds, Westview Cemetery. Like Oakland, Westview is the final resting place of many well-known and influential Atlantans, and it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The cemeteries even share some history, as Westview was created in order to relieve Oakland as it neared capacity. But Westview is truly unique unto itself. I'm Craig with the Gwinnett County Public Library. Let's take a look at this special and sometimes overlooked Atlanta landmark. In the summer of 1864, Atlanta was embroiled in the Civil War. Union General William Tecumseh Sherman commanded troops in a months-long campaign to capture the city before his famous march to the sea the following fall. On July 28th, his army dealt an overwhelming defeat to Confederate General John B. Hood at the Battle of Ezra Church. Atlanta fell to Sherman only a few weeks later. Part of the Ezra Church battlefield is land on which Westview Cemetery now sits. Atlanta was booming following the Civil War. In 1884, Oakland Cemetery, which was known as Atlanta Cemetery at the time, had just sold its final plots. The city was in dire need of a new burial site that could accommodate its rapidly growing population and formed a committee to find such a site. This committee suggested that Atlanta would be better served by allowing the cemetery to be privately operated. Upon agreement from the city council, the Westview Cemetery Association was formed in May to manage the operations of the new cemetery. For the remainder of the year, this group of more than two dozen leading citizens began assembling a collection of properties four miles west of downtown. They managed to amass 577 acres for about $25,000, roughly equivalent to $725,000 today. Five more acres would be added in the years to come. According to the first general manager of the cemetery, E.P. McBurney, it was to be a lawn park style cemetery similar to Woodlawn Cemetery in New York City. By the end of 1884, Westview was established and accepting its first burials. At 582 acres and with more than 100,000 graves, Westview is the largest civilian cemetery in the southeastern United States. It's divided into 72 sections, plus a large mausoleum at Westview Abbey. Roughly half of the land remains undeveloped. When Westview opened, cemeteries were still segregated by race. The section of the cemetery for black burials was named Rest Haven, after Methodist Bishop Gilbert Haven, who would be an early benefactor of what is now Clark Atlanta University. Also, like other cemeteries of the 19th century, Westview featured a pauper's burial grounds called God's Acre. Rest Haven quickly fell out of favor among black Atlantans when Southview Cemetery opened in 1886, and in 1925 Atlanta ceased using God's Acre to bury paupers. In 1907, Westview had drafted a perpetual care plan for maintaining the cemetery into the future, but Rest Haven and God's Acre were excluded from this plan. Consequently, they receive periodic maintenance but are no longer open to the public today. Like Oakland, Westview is the final resting place of many famous Atlantans. However, it's still an active cemetery, so those resting here are people whose influence spans the final years of the 19th century through the present day. Former mayors, politicians, and business luminaries are alongside prominent civil rights activists, sports stars, writers, and entertainers. For instance, Asa Candler, the founder of the Coca-Cola Company in the 1890s, is interred here. And so is Chris Kelly, member of the popular rap duo Criss Cross from the 1990s. Recently, notables Herman Cain and C.T. Vivian were laid to rest at Westview. In 1930, Asa Candler's son, Asa Jr., assumed management of Westview Cemetery. He wanted Westview to be seen as the premier cemetery of the southeastern United States. Toward that end, in 1942, Candler proposed what would become one of the largest mausoleums in the country, Westview Abbey. Though it fell a little short of his aspiration, the structure is still exceedingly impressive. Standing three stories tall and large enough to house more than 11,000 entombments, it features a Spanish Renaissance design very rare to see in the southern U.S. Among its many exterior details are the seals of the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta, 
along with tiled murals and lines from 19th century poets like Robert Louis Stevenson. Altogether, the building features more than 70 stained glass windows installed over several years, and some of which were produced locally. Budget shortfalls informed unique design choices. What looks like carved stone on the building's exterior is actually finely cast concrete, and a large chime tower atop the structure doesn't actually chime. Attached to the mausoleum is the Abbey Administration Building. In fitting with Candler's vision for Westview, the building was to provide full mortuary services for clients. However, in 1951, the Georgia State Legislature began outlawing cemeteries from providing such services, so it too was not completed as envisioned. If Westview Abbey looks familiar to you already, that may be because it's been featured in several Hollywood productions filmed in Atlanta. One peculiar feature of Westview is its 100-year-old, 50,000-gallon crenellated water tower, the top of which resembles a castle battlement. It's a remnant of a once-thriving greenhouse operation known as the Westview Floral Company. Prior to the mid-20th century, cemeteries often grew and sold flowers to lot holders and the general public. Westview Floral Company's greenhouses quickly grew to 50,000 square feet of space, making it the largest such operation in the South. At its peak, it sold floral arrangements to many high-profile clients and events, including a dinner for President Grover Cleveland when he visited Atlanta in 1895. Westview's greenhouses were also where the Burford Holly plant was discovered, a shrub that's now found worldwide. Sadly, by 1973, the greenhouses had ceased operations and were demolished. Also demolished that year was an administration building that had wrapped around the water tower and featured Asa Candler Jr.'s trophy room. Candler used the room to collect the animals he had shot on his hunting trips. All that remains are these octagonal walls. Another Candler era addition that still exists is the 26 foot long bass relief called Last Supper. As the name suggests, it's a depiction of Leonardo da Vinci's famous 15th century painting of almost the same title. The bas relief was added in 1950 and designed by renowned German sculptor Fritz Paul Zimmer, who by this time was living and working in Atlanta. Visitors will also see what's known as the receiving tomb. It dates to 1888 and was necessary at the time to store coffins awaiting burial when the ground was either too firm or too muddy. It became especially useful when Atlanta was gripped by the 1918 influenza pandemic. With the opening of the Abbey Mausoleum in 1943, the tomb became obsolete and was sealed shortly thereafter. There's more buried at Westview than you might imagine. In the 1970s and 1980s, the owners turned roughly 80 acres of unused land near the rear of the property into a private commercial landfill. Westview Landfill Incorporated, as it was known, provided a necessary new revenue stream for a cemetery that now had to compete against those in the booming suburbs. Though profitable, the landfill attracted complaints from nearby neighborhoods, and by 1990 it had ceased operations and the land has reforested since. Westview Cemetery is very near Interstate 20 on the west side of Atlanta. It's accessible by MARTA Rail via the Westlake Transit Station, though due to its size is better enjoyed by car. Keep in mind that although it's open to the public, Westview is still a private, active cemetery that handles hundreds of burials a year. Visitors are asked to remain off of the lots and not to disturb the peaceful enjoyment of others. As always, you can find more about the sites I cover on this series through the digital resources offered by GCPL. New Georgia Encyclopedia and the Digital Library of Georgia are excellent user-friendly databases for fans of Georgia history. And I'd like to remind you that GCPL offers interlibrary loan service for print items that it does not own. I recommend using this service to check out a copy of Atlanta's Historic Westview Cemetery by Jeff Clemens. This comprehensive account of Westview is a must read for Georgia history buffs. For more information on interlibrary loan, visit ask.gwinnettpl.org forward slash materials. Thank you for coming along and we'll see you at the library.